welcome back to my channel. I'm Moriarty. This is Moriarty's Universe. And today we're going to talk books. So I went to Barnes & Noble and I hadn't bought books in a really long time. Um, I've been saving my money paying off my student loans, but I'm almost done and I needed a little bit of a pep talk to myself. So I thought I would go to some bookstores and get some books. So four of these are from Barnes & Noble. Two of them are from Target. And then three of them are from are from Half Price Books. Um, so I love going to bookstores uh, just because you can definitely get books on Amazon, don't get me wrong, but that doesn't really help bookstores stay alive. There's just something special about going into a bookstore and being surrounded by books and knowing that the sole purpose of this building is to increase your reading horizons. There's just something really special about that that you don't get when you go to Amazon. You know what I mean? I don't know, maybe it's just me. But yeah, so let's talk books. I got a book haul for us and let's get into it. Book on my list is One of Us is Lying um, by Karen M. McManus. It has been on my list for a really, really, really long time. And the library is always sold out. Like I think I'm 57 on this list and I've been on this list for like half a year. So I just went out and bought it. So I have One of Us is Lying. I have the sequel, One of Us is Next. And the sequel after that, Who Can Keep a Secret. So I've got all three novels. They are some thick Nellies. So they're going to take me a minute to get through. But I'm excited. And now I don't have to rush because I own them and they're all mine and I can go ahead and read them. So, One of Us is Lying. I'm just gonna read like the cover for you. Pay close attention and you might solve this. On Monday afternoon, five students at Bayview High walk into detention. Bronwyn, the brain, is Yale bound and never breaks a rule. Addie, the beauty, is the picture perfect homecoming princess. Nate, the criminal, is already on probation for dealing. Cooper, the athlete, is the all-star baseball pitcher. And Simon, the outcast, is the creator of Bayview High's notorious gossip app. Only, Simon never makes it out of that classroom. Before the end of detention, Simon's dead. And according to investigators, his death wasn't an accident. On Monday, he died. But on Tuesday, he planned to post juicy reveals about all four of his high-profile classmates, which makes all four of them suspects in his murder. Or are they just the perfect patsies for a killer who's still on the loose? Everyone has secrets, right? What really matters is how far you would go to protect them. I don't need any more than that and if all of them are going to be like that yes please just going off the back of them like the first one says everyone has secrets right the second one says it's a new school year at Bayview and no secret is safe and then the third one says keep your secrets to yourself like don't need much more than that please get to the drama the gossip and the murder thank you are a good girl's guide to murder by Holly Jackson. I listened to this on audio and it was amazing. So I was like, it was there. I originally went to the store to get the sequel to this, but they didn't have it. And it was there and I was like, I loved it so much. I want my own copy. It's hardback. It's beautiful. I am like super glowy today and I'm not quite sure why, but yeah, that's what the cover looks like. It's fucking pretty. And yeah, so I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this. So I've already read this. So this is just adding to my collection. The McManus novels I have not read yet. So I'm very excited to read them. Next on my list is, Br next on my list is Bruja Born by Zoraida Cordova. I've probably jacked up her name I apologize but one way or another death always collects so I didn't need much more but I'll read you the back three sisters one spell countless dead Lula Mortis feels like an outsider her sister's newfound in cantrix powers have wounded her in ways that Lula's bruja healing powers can't fix and she longs for the comfort her family once brought her thank the dios for max her sweet, steady boyfriend who sees the beauty within her and brings light to her life. Then a bus crash turns Lula's world upside down. Her classmates are all dead, including Max, but Lula was born to heal, to fix. She can bring Max back, even if it means seeking help from her sisters and defying death herself. 
but the magic that defies the laws of the Dios is dangerous, unpredictable. And when the dust settles, Max isn't the only one who's been brought back. Yes, please. I am a little scared though, because like the very first part of the book is all of the praise for Labyrinth Lost. So I'm really hoping that, um, uh, it is, this is book two. So this is actually book two in a series called The Brooklyn Brujas. I wish I'd looked it more into it before I bought it. I would have brought, really? That's Leia. I would have looked into it a little bit further and bought Labyrinth Lost if I knew this was going to be book two. I don't know if they're connected. I'll have to do a little bit more research on that. I'm so glad I waited before I decided to read it because I would not have known what the fuck was going on. So yeah, but I'm still excited to read it and now I'm on my way to the library to see if they have Labyrinth Lost. Next book on our list is Girl, Serpent, and Thorn in this cover, y'all. As soon as I saw it on booktube, I was like, oh my god, that cover is so pretty. A so pretty like i i think i'm just gonna read it i've heard good and bad things about it sometimes the princess is the monster i think this is the girl that can't touch anything i think so there was and there was not as all stories begin a princess cursed to be poisonous to the touch but for Soraya, who has lived her life hidden away, apart from her family, safe only in her gardens, is not just a story. As the day of her twin brother's wedding approaches, Soraya must decide if she's willing to step outside the shadows for the first time. Below in the dungeon is a demon who holds the knowledge she craves, the answer to her freedom. Above is a young man who isn't afraid of her, who eyes linger not with fear, but with an understanding of who she is beneath the poison. Soraya thought she knew her place in the world, but when choices lead to consequences she never imagined, she begins to question who she is and who she is becoming, human or demon, princess or monster. And although it's much bigger than like the other novels that I picked up, it's not as thick. So hopefully this will be a decently quick read. Looks like author notes. Three hundred. It's only 311 pages, so not as thick as the other bad boys. I think that one of us is lying is like 400 some odd pages. Oh my god, they're not numbered? Oh no! Oh. I was like, what? Yeah, that was only 311, and this is 358. So they, these are some thick boys. Alright, next books I got um, are from Half Price Books. I literally just picked them up today. Uh, we were out in the area and I was like, must visit. So, first one I got is called Killing Club by Marcy Walsh and Michael Malone. Now, apparently this is like a real story that was written by someone who plays a character on One Life to Live, which I guess is like a soap opera i don't do soap operas i have no idea who this person is i picked it up for the jacket it was only a game over a decade ago in the small town of gloria new jersey feisty red-headed outcast jamie ferreira and 11 friends from gloria hart high school started a club they would come up with ingenious ways to kill people they didn't like pretty much everybody they knew and write down these pretend murders in a death book Calling themselves the Killing Club, the group of misfits voted on who was most likely to get away with their imaginary murders. It was harmless fun, or so they thought, until the dead bodies, dead bodies started piling up. Legit, Murder Club brought me to the book. I opened it. It said until the bodies started piling up, and I was like, all right, sold. I, I don't need to know anything else. I'm sold. The rest of it says, now, more than a decade later, Detective Sergeant Jamie Ferreira of the Gloria Police Department has a homicide investigation on her hands. The victim is Ben Timos, one of her fellow Killing Club members, and where Ben's death is an exact replica of a murder once dreamed up in the club. Jamie's boss, her fiancé Rod, is sure the death is just a ghoulish accident, but when the club reunites for Ben's funeral, the unimaginable happens. Another murder. Another killing club dead. Another crime copied from the death book. Soon, Jamie is getting death threats. Anonymous notes with details only those in the club would know. Someone is targeting the killing club and all signs point to one of their own. Jamie's oldest friends turn into suspects. 
In a race against time, Jamie must separate her teenage memories from her hardened cop skills and find the killer by learning dark secrets at the heart of the killing club before everyone in the group is dead, including Jamie. Oh, well, damn. I'm excited for this. And this guy's not too big either. I think she might be 300 some odd pages. 276. So this is legit the smallest book in the list right now. So I'm excited about that bad boy. Next book is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. I have wanted this book for a while. I saw the cover when it came out. And I usually don't do contemporary, which I believe this is. It's about a girl who doesn't really have any family and a guy who doesn't really have any family. So they become each other's like emergency contacts, I think, is like the gist. Um, but yeah, I am excited. I don't really do romance. I don't really do contemporary, but the cover is beautiful. They had it in hardback. Everyone has talked about this book. I think I'm going to read it and enjoy it, hopefully. Last book on the list is These Shallow Graves by Jennifer Donnelly. Now, Jennifer Donnelly sounds familiar, but I don't know why. I feel like I've read something else by her that I can't remember. I'll have to Google her. But yeah, so these are about a um, old timey, old timey time. I think it's the revolution. It's in the time of Nellie Bly. So I think that's like industrial revolution time. I'm not sure. But basically you follow a girl named Jo and she wants to be a writer. Um, her dad owns a newspaper company and then her dad perishes accidentally by uh, his gun going off while he was cleaning it. But Joe knows that he's too smart to clean a loaded gun. And on her journey to discover what happened, she discovers more and more um, secrets that point to a murder. This one is a big boy, though. So let's see. This guy's got... Oh, Lord! This guy's got 482 pages. 482 pages. I think this is the biggest novel so far. Um, but it's got a mystery, historical setting. I love a female, love a good female-led mystery romance thriller, which is what this seems to be. So I am hoping for something quick-paced and dirty and just a good time. I also really love... The insides, they have like these old fashioned um, maps of New York on the front and back. So those are cool. Those are pretty. So yeah, these are the books that I picked up for the month of September. And I don't know what I'm reading yet. I'm working on a few Nancy Drews right now. But I don't really have anything else that I'm reading. I want to at least finish two or three books this month. Um, I finished A Good Girl's Guide to Murder a couple of days into September. So I'm going to count that. Um, but yeah, come back and see what I'm reading in a couple of days. And this has been my book haul. I'm Moriarty. This is Moriarty's Universe. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.